Hi friends, I am here with another story for you. But before starting the story, I would like to tell you that we have completed 17 scientist stories with toys. I hope you have loved the series and you are watching the toys and making them. So we will be doing in total 20 stories, that is 3 more stories and one of that is today's story. So I hope you all are enjoying the series. If you have not subscribed our channel, please do so, so that you get our updates of the coming up stories. And obviously this is not the end of the stories. Uh, it is the end of, it will be the end of this series. But we will be coming back with more stories for you in the next series. So let's start our story for today. Today's story is about again a very famous person. And uh, he is called the father of revolution, industrial revolution. It is James Watt. James Watt was born in the lowlands of Scotland. His parents were respected members of the society from distinguished and well-educated families. They have had very much high expectations from their son too. But they did not know that their son was going to be the, this big name in history. James Watt became one of the giants of industrial revolutions and his inventions redefined the British economy and infrastructure. His legacy reached down through the countries that followed far exceeding the fame he enjoyed in his living life. But how did all this come upon? How did James Watt do so much to write his name in history? Let us know. James Watt was born on 19th January 1736 in the Scottish town of Greenhaw. His father worked in both shipping industry and was local government and his grandfather was a teacher of mathematics, surveying and navigation. He was a teacher of navigation. I had never heard this before. During his life, James was often unwell and his mother educated him at home in his childhood for some years until he could be strong enough to go to school. He was a bright child, exhibiting an aptitude for mathematics especially. He used to read many books and any book that is lying around the house. When he used to get bored of reading, he would play with toys. He used to take apart the parts of toys and make a new toy from the same parts. Isn't it interesting? After a few years, he was sent to his grandfather's house. One day, when he was playing in the house around, he saw a kettle. Water was boiling inside the kettle. The steam was coming out of the kettle that pushed the lid that was on top of the kettle. James was very fascinated by looking at it. Can you imagine? He was just fascinated by a kettle that was boiling the water and the lid that came up. So from this we know that we can say these extraordinary people see very ordinary things around them in an extraordinary way. He took the lid off and put it back again and then hold a spoon that was or a silver spoon over the steam that was coming out of the mouth of the kettle now. The silver spoon were heated up very quickly. This was the start of James' fascination for the power of steam. When James returned to his own house, he could go to school now. And his father gave him his own set of tools and took him to his own workshop. James could do wonderful things with a small set of tools and he could fix anything in the workshop. After leaving his school, I mean after finishing his school, he worked at his father's workshop. After a while, he also worked at the Glasgow University as an instrument maker and he also repaired a lot of things there. Working there, he absorbed a lot of principles of heat and understanding of gases. 
and also about importance of applying all these things into the real life, working it for the improvement of your own life. The academics there in the university were extremely impressed by his skills and more importantly his willingness to learn anything new. One of his colleagues one day asked him to help him repair an engine and James could do it very fast and successfully. From that day James started repairing engines. In 1765, when he was trying to fix one of the engines, he suddenly remembered the steam kettle that he saw in his grandmother's house. And that was the time he got an idea of the first steam engine. He worked hard and researched a lot to make a steam engine. He was successful in setting up his own workplace to set up a steam engine and research. He had two vessels, a steam cylinder connected to a cold condenser connected to a valve which could be operated by an engine and that was a great breakthrough to the industrial engine, engine revolution. Then he built a model and it worked very rapidly. He could see that he will get twice the power and he started a lot better with lot of better efficiency. But his model was not potentially strong. It was very weak model but still he got so much high efficiency. There was still very much improvement scope in his own design. He knew that. He started constructing a full scale and an engine without any flaws. He did not stop his research even in financial crisis and kept working hard with his own money to fulfill his dream of setting up a high power steam engine. Soon there was demand for his invention in different fields. By 1790 he became a very rich man by selling his designed steam engine. On August 19th, 19th, 1819, he peacefully took his last breath. His legacy as the father of industrial revolution has become solidified in history and public awareness of his life and work is high even till today. The man may have faced many difficulties, tasks at times, but did not give up. Rad played an enormous role in shaping the world we live in today. To honor his great contribution in industrial revolution, the British Association gave his name to the unit of electrical power. So, we know him and we take his name every day in our day-to-day -day life. When we say 80 odd bulb 60 watt bulb, 40 watt bulb, we are saying his name every day. That what came from his name, James Watt. So from the story, I think we should learn to see science in different and very small things around us. Anything around you, anything going around you, every anything and everything contains science. We need to see in that way. There is a small saying that every photograph has a photographic eye behind that photograph. So any lake that is shot by a photographer looks better than the same lake in our photo. So the scientific eye behind everything is very important. Start questioning. Start questioning everything around you and see what answers you get. And you should see everything around you scientifically. Now, I hope you loved today's story and now let's make a toy. Hi friends. So, I hope you have all loved the story and now it's time to make a toy. So, today's toy is based on, on steam obviously. Uh, but to play with steam can be a little risky. So, I uh, wish your parents or your elder brothers and sisters are there with you. 
while you are making these toys and playing with them. So, the easiest way to make steam at home is nothing but a cooker. So, I have added some water inside the cooker, removed the shitty that we call it and then just place the lid back on. So, now we are going to make fan which can rotate on the power of steam. So, first I will show you how to make the fan and then let's see if that rotates on steam. Let's start. So, what all do we need to make a fan? A paper, scissor, glue, a pin and some beads. So, let's start. You have to start by making a square out of the paper. This is the easiest way to make the square. Now we have already, we already have one fold. Fold it exactly like that on the other side also. So we have a, a diagonals on our square. Now we have to cut the paper on both the diagonals till the mid from the vertices till the mid of this diagonal. Open it again similarly on the other side. Now we have cuts on all the four sides and now we are going to glue alternate pins to the center like these. So I am using some glue. Also use the glue at the end of the pins so that they stick properly. Now we have, we have stuck this. Now don't stick this. We need to stick this side. So again apply some glue. Hold it for a second if you don't have fast glue as I do. Then again leave this and stick this one. I think you need to hold it a bit. Sorry, not this one. Stick this one. Make sure you're sticking the alternate pins. And see, our fan is ready. You get these fans in melas or somewhere in the mall also, which rotate on. Now we have a pin. We will put a bead inside it. And then poke it exactly at the center of our fan. Please take help of some elder person if you are not used to use pins. And then again put a bead at the back. So there's a bead in the front and there's a bead at the back. So our fan is ready. In this other plastic fan we need a bottle. It can be a used bottle. A scissor and a stick, a skewer and one bead. So what you need to do is cut your bottle at the neck. Again take help of your parents or your elder brothers and sisters if you need. We also need the cap of the bottle. And now if you have these fan like things on your bottle then that's that's fun more fun but if you don't have you can mark with a pen equidistant mark it equ pen you can make 12 petals of your fan now cut all these petals wherever you have marked and then fan out 
your fan. You can also cut the ends of your petals like a fan, like this. And the most important step is you need to twist all your petals on one side. Then make a hole on the cap of the uh, bottle so that you can put the skewer in. I have made one already to show you and then put your skewer with your bead in the hole and your fan is ready. So now there's a cooker and the water inside the cooker. Let's start the gas. Now feel, so you can hear the sound of the steam coming out. Now hold the fan. Please be careful, please. It is a bit, you can see the steam, see? It is a bit dangerous. Please take help of your parents. I am also taking help of my mother. <laughs> And see if the fan rotates. See? The fan. Your paper fan can get a bit wet because of steam. But you can see the principle. You can see that it's rotating. I to ola zala, I guess. Try with this. See? Woo! Fun, right? I hope you have loved the toys and you'll sure make it at home. And let's meet up next time for a new story. Bye! Kasla, must have